Doug Collins, maybe you know this famous basketball player as the number one pick of the 1973 NBA draft. Or perhaps you know Doug Collins from his coaching career, coaching NBA teams like the Chicago Bulls, Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, and Philadelphia 76ers. Or maybe you know Collins from his broadcasting success, serving as an analyst for various NBA-related shows. His Olympics, the college, uh, the pros, wow. Wow, what a great career. And looking back on it, uh, hey, you played with Doug Collins. Wow, I did. Here in Benton, former classmates and team members knew Collins before all the fame, and even before he had the body style of a great player. So when he was a freshman, he was a shrimp, huh? Well, he was just, uh, you wouldn't think he would be any kind of athlete at all. He, you know, he looked more like a couch potato than an athlete. Uh, you know he's going to see this, right? I understand, and he'll laugh, and he'll grin, and he'll agree. And, uh, but uh, uh, I can remember, too, there was times when if we had 11 kids to, to play and you got to pick teams, Doug would be the 11th person that didn't get to, to play that particular game. When people ask me about Doug, uh, you know, I, I usually say, what do you think about a guy that was not on the starting five his junior year in high school, did get to play some, and five years later was the number one pick in the NBA draft. I, I think that's a story you would have trouble selling to Hollywood to make a movie about because it's, it's just unbelievable. They all agree Colin's success is due to his incredible work ethic. And as with any hometown hero, there's always a little folklore. In this case, his growth spurt is up for debate. The story that I get is that when, when he went off to college, he got mono and grew four or five inches. Now, how would I like to wake up tomorrow and be five inches taller? Wow. So, and then that's when he went boom, 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 and then it's all history after that. That history includes being the hero of the 1972 Olympics, taking Team USA to the gold medal game versus Soviet Union, and even after being knocked unconscious, was able to make his free throws. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, we had a big parade here in Benton uh, right after the Olympics, and of course Doug was in the parade, and I was standing on the side of the street watching the parade, and, and Doug went by, and he pointed at me, said, be at my house in 45 minutes. So I'm, I didn't know what that was all about. So I go down there to his house and he says, I haven't slept in three days. He said, I'm gonna go to bed and you're gonna answer the phone. So, you know, over the next couple hours, I'm talking to uh, Sports Illustrated. Uh, you know, I, here I'm a nobody college kid, 20 years old or so, and I'm talking to ABC, CBS, NBC, all the uh, New York Times and all these people, you know, so it was kind of fun for me. The Soviet Union team thought they were tough, but little did they know they were up against the son of a sheriff who at one point as a child lived in the Franklin County Jail. We all wanted to rise and go on and be what Doug Collins became, and he showed us that someone could. You're proud of him because you know he did it the right way. He, he didn't cheat, he, didn't, he wasn't hurting people trying to get to the top. He was, he's always been just a great guy. They say Collins' story should serve as an inspiration to the younger generation. If you set your mind to it and work hard, maybe you can accomplish big things. You can be successful in a small town, big town, whatever. It's, uh, it's just what you set your mind to do. You can get to that next level and that next level, and then you can you can maybe be a, a, a Doug Collins. You don't know you don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't know what tomorrow holds. But keep that dream. Don't don't give up on that dream.